We hire paranormals. Uh, was that a ghost I seen? Shine a light on me. We need a camera on him. I know you heard that noise coming out them trees. We hunting paranormal. They trying to scare a brother, but can a brother get scared? We hunting paranormals. Nah, that ain't normal. We hunting paranormal. We hire paranormal. We 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 hire paranormal. How's it going, guys? I hope everyone's doing well. I hope everyone had a good weekend. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Well, it's Monday, so it's a day later. Um, yeah. I hope you guys had a good day. So, uh, before we get into this investigation, it's actually a, prelim a preliminary investigation. Um, we had a lot going on that day, and I want to explain it before we get into the investigation. Um, so, uh, through the partnership of uh, Ward Fox Games with Trudy Wagner and myself and the channel Can a Brother Get Scared Paranormal, we, uh, and a couple other play, um, local businesses, businesses in town as well, um, we uh, sponsored a uh, movie event for the Dragon Soldiers movie, which is, I, I enjoyed it very much. It was really good. Uh, check it out. I mean, honestly, it's like when you, your budgets are this small, you kind of have to be more absurd uh, just to like get people to pay for your movie. Uh, and, like one of the biggest problems with indie film at our level is you know piracy kind of kills it a little bit. So uh, yeah, if they made gangbusters money, they'd be sure. But it's um, it was made in Grand Junction, so it was pretty cool. Uh, they had actors from LA, people from other places and other states, and it was a very good movie. Um, I got to meet the cast, it was cool. But uh, we had that event for them that day. So with this investigation, uh, Brian Wade, Mr. Wade, thank you for allowing us to have access to it. He um, gave us a tour. So what you're gonna see is a lot of uh, key information that we're gonna use for the continuation of the investigation at a later date when we're able to have full access to the uh, place and um, we can therefore actually conduct a true investigation. Now we were able to conduct a couple of EVP sessions, um, we did a couple of photography sessions as well, but uh, for the most part it was just we had maybe maybe an hour. And you'll hear me through the video comment about the situation and why maybe there's like a countdown and stuff like that, but uh, yeah. So just keep in mind uh, and pay attention to all the information, to the names, the people, the experiences because definitely when we actually hit that place up again like we usually do we'll start off with the live and uh, you guys will be able to uh, participate and uh, also just a real quick announcement it is confirmed this year's Friday the 13th in August the team and I will be investigating a haunted former Supermax prison in uh, Canyon City by far will be the most haunted place I don't know about the team, but myself, I've ever been at, and I'm very excited to get to that um, that date and that investigation. A lot is going to happen. We will be we will be there for six hours, um, and that's all I really can say right now. So be on the lookout. We'll be actually promoting that event hard. So um, let's get into the investigation. Much love. Now, what are your experiences here, paranormal-wise? Well, uh, so I've worked here for about 17 years, 
and uh, uh, there used to be a projection booth uh, up at the top of the balcony. And one night, uh, I, I was often here by myself late at night, and one night coming out of the projection booth, I uh, felt a cold shiver and got pushed down the stairs. What? Um, so that, that was a big one. Uh, there's a, um, a good story about the, the lady in white uh, who, Victorian dress, big hat, feathers, parasol, all that sort of stuff that kind of rises and falls through the stage, despite the fact that there's no, would be no lights on and there's no trap doors on the stage anymore or anything like that. Um, That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, almost a century old and uh, the building, uh, 98 years old, lots of history. Um, performers in uh, 1923, 1925, you know, we had some performers that were quite old who were born in the 18, late 1830s, 1840s. So, like, there's kind of history attached to, the, to this building for quite a long time. That's awesome. That is awesome. Um, my last question is, well, for now, would be, what is your favorite part of this place? Well, my favorite part of this place is unfortunately no longer exists. Oh, no. Um, it's the, the, the upper part of the balcony where the projection booth used to be. Um, but that's been replaced with, with seating, and it's very nice up there, um, but it's not quite the same as it used to be. Well, thank you very much, sir. Sure. Somebody said the law. Lucy Gates? Lucy Gates, opera singer. She was the first person to perform in the building. Lucy Gates. She's the person that we assume is the lady in white. Oh. There you go. Uh, because everybody says, you know, the big hat and the parasol and the, huh. the white dress and, you know, kind of the performance on stage. Everybody kind of assumes that that... Hmm. So maybe we can try to figure it out if it's there. Maybe we try to talk to her. Yeah, I might try. I'll break the spirit box out. We got like, I got mine charged, I got the phone. Dude, we... I've got two batteries charged this time. Oh, boy, let's go. Uh, I know, we're gonna, that, like, they're not draining us today. Now you, say, <laughs> now you say she manifests on the stage? Yeah. Is there anything underneath the stage? Yeah, you want to see it? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is our old projection equipment, this is the machine that I used to use. And the, the biggest paranormal experience I've had was, I, I honestly believe that there was a ghost of a former projectionist in this building. Because if you did not talk to that projectionist and kiss the projector, something was going wrong. Hmm. Wow. You, you needed to greet the projectionist. I never knew his name. I always just called him Doug. I would walk in and say, hi, Doug. Let's have a good show today. I'm here to put on the movies. Let's go. And then before I started the machine, I would kiss the machine. Okay. Now, it could just be superstition, but... If I wasn't working, say it was Christmas Day, and I wasn't working, the other projectionists wouldn't kiss the projector. They'd catch on fire. Oh. Or they would break down, or something else would happen. Every single time. Now, af now after the renovation, did that stop? It did, because that projection booth is, no longer exists. Mm -hmm. So now this projector sits here, you know, it's kind of a museum piece. It hasn't been turned on since 2012. Hmm. Um, this projector is uh, 19 or 1896 Edison projecting kinetoscope. It's one of the first commercially available projectors uh, in the United States. Wow, that's way cool. Hand crank. Oh, yeah. old oh, school with it. Yeah. Get the forearm Get, workout. Right. Got being lopsided. <laughs> oh. There's some. <laughs> just, just real quick, just, just real, just real quick. Real quick, what? Oh! <laughs> I know. I was. Like, oh snap! <laughs> I know. That's what I said. Dude, <laughs> I said this is my said. logo. At Board Fox Games. They actually invest in black business. Mm -hmm. Juneteenth, baby. Juneteenth. <laughs> Emancipation Day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll have your logo on the big. And of course, we're getting set up for an event tonight. Oh, wow. Um, this is the original black wall. You can see a spot where there was a fire at one point. Oh. Small. Uh, not, not, no, no, nothing, not, nothing tragic. Nothing to the structure, but. Wow. Wow. 
And a lot of this has been renovated as well. Well, see, and that's what's curious, Jay, Lindsay. I mean, even though they renovated that space up there. Are the light switches still the same for the staircase? Wouldn't, be, yeah, just on the, outside wouldn't the, the fact that they have like this wall and other original pieces still possibly keep the projectionist, wow. spirit of the projectionist still here? Oh yeah, if he was attached to just the building, definitely, especially depending on what this material, like what you guys want to go down to the An orchestra pit? Because you'd have silent films. The Avalon actually had an orchestra that played for the silent film. So they would sit in the pit and play while the movie would be spinning on the screen. That's way cool. And then there were a number of dressing rooms here. When I started working here in 2003, this looked like Freddy Krueger's dungeon. Oh. <laughs> right. There was a giant coal-fired boiler. Oh. Um, that hadn't seen the sun since the early 70s. There was trash in here from the 70s. Oh. There was trash in here from the 50s. Find the cat, but, you know, there was always, you would always catch it out of the corner of your eye. As soon as you looked at it, it would be gone. Yeah, oh, so now you're just going to hear me. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you're going to hear meowing and you're going to be like, oh, and then you're going to look over and it's just Lindsay trying to find a cat. Right, sorry. <laughs> of course, during the 1920s, He's there like, was you know, prohibition, right? I love uh -huh. So there used to be kind of a gentleman's speakeasy down here as well. Right. And at one point, there was, uh, because the building was also owned by the uh, publisher of the newspaper, which his office was right across the street, there was a tunnel that ran under Main Street, so um, between the two buildings. Because I know Jay is confirmed. Purport, purportedly. Well, because I know Jay has said that there's a couple of places that he's been at that has talked about the tunnels. Right. Mm -hmm. And then Lindsay as well. I have no clue about these tunnels, but we keep hearing about them. Well, that's the thing. Like, by the time I got in here, we used to crawl around the basement. Um, I don't think anybody that I used to work for can fire me now. Yeah, we used to crawl around in the basement after work. Um, and try to find the tunnels. And we, we found some bricked up spots, um, but we didn't find anything that was confirmed until they tore all this up to redo it in 2012. And there was a, a definitely a t access to a tunnel. Um, and and it, they were supposedly used for bootlegging. Hmm. Do you want to ask a question? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> you guys didn't see that. Hey, Doug, it's me. Are we going to have a good show tonight? Yes. That's good. That's good. Help us out, man. Yes. We need this. It's been a while. I'm, I'm going to go show where the old booth used to be. Is there a draft up here? Stand right here. This is where my door to my office used to be. Maybe it's just nostalgia, but all the hairs in my house. Okay. Anyway, this is where the original projection used to be. It was a basically. stock used to be a nitrate film stock so it was highly flammable and they didn't have light bulbs they just had two exposed carbon rods and just shot a shitload of electricity through it wow. so if that film got that electricity the whole room would go up in 10 seconds so right now we're in a movie theater Is there any spirits that want to speak to me? Hello? No. Why not?
Do you think we could get him to pause the music just for a couple minutes? I'm sorry? Do you think we could get him to pause the audio just for a couple minutes? Because I'm getting responses, I just can't hear what they are. Like, I just got like a bunch of responses. I'm not surprised. Well, actually, the moment we stepped up on the stairs, this started going crazy. Did it really? Yeah. All right, Doug, I want a good show tonight. Yeah, Doug. Take care of this See, look, it's responding to you. <laughs> All right, Doug. Uh, seriously, you know it's me. I've been here for a long time. We need a good show tonight. This is not for us. It's for these performers that shot this movie here, which is super important to us. So help us put on a good show. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Okay. All right, thanks, Doug. I'm gonna hold the key up. Is it okay? Do you have paranormal experiences outside this building? Do I have what? Do you have paranormal experiences outside this building? Not often. Most of them have been here. It hasn't. So that's a good thing because that means there's no electrical that will set it off. And this area? How was it doing in this area? Steady. Steady? What are we looking at? There's no numbers, so. <laughs> no, it, you can tell me though, it's the N I K K E N, you know what I mean? Okay, so it's on the first N. First N. <laughs> Can you quit messing with the lights during the show? Is there anything you'd like to say? Are there... Is there anyone here that needs help? Is there anyone here that maybe doesn't realize that they're in the afterlife? You know, we're here to take care of the place. We're not here to wreck it. We're not here to destroy it. We just want to take care of it like you did. Yep. So help us put on good shows. And you can't come home with us. As much as you want to, you can't come home with any one of us here. You must stay here. But if you have any last words you'd like to say, now's the time to say them. Because I'm going to shut this off, and once I shut it off, that's it. Anything you'd like to say? Lost. 
We hire paranormals. Uh, was that a ghost I seen? Shine a light on me. We need a camera on him. I know you heard that noise coming out them trees. We hunting paranormal. They trying to scare a brother, but can a brother get scared? We hunting paranormals. Nah, that ain't normal. We hunting paranormal. We hire paranormal. We 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 hire paranormal. We hire paranormal. We hire paranormal. We hire paranormal.